This recording has been made to help you develop the competencies that you need in order to complete the lab exercise this week. That is, to find a first-hand report of an experiment investigating the relationship of Wolbachia bacteria and insects, and to find a summary of different, several different experiments looking at some particular aspect of that relationship. In other words, a research article and a review article. And how to document them correctly. Before we go further, let's revisit some terms to make sure that we're all on the same page. Articles are how the information you need is packaged. You will search for, print out, read, and mark up the articles as you work to understand the information they contain. Articles are the parts that make up a different kinds of periodicals. What's a periodical? Periodical publications are materials that are published on a regular basis like a daily newspaper or a weekly magazine or a quarterly journal. It's a publication that has many editions but always the same name. So what's a publication? Typically, publication means something that has been printed for sale or distribution, like a book or a magazine or newspaper. Of course, today, the lines are blurry between what is print and what is a web publication. Many of the publications you will be using are available electronically because of the Internet. They started out in print and are still printed, but you will be using the electronic version. All these articles and their corresponding publications are organized in databases. Databases are not search engines. Instead, they are collections of articles that have been described by humans and they have lots of value-added features, like how to cite the article, links to the full text, and ways of tagging articles to make them more findable. Also, databases cost money. Lane Library subscribes to some databases offering articles from publications Armstrong students need for their classes. The state of Georgia pays for subscriptions to other databases and makes them available through Galileo. And in this class, you will be using a database that is paid for by the United States government for the public to use. So, let's get to some of these databases. I have linked several databases to the online course guide developed for this class. You can get to that course guide through the library home page. A favorite starting point for many students is Galileo. This is the access point to a collection of over 100 databases provided to the university system by the state of Georgia. Together, the databases provided in Galileo range over many different subjects and formats. If you use this database off campus, you will need to use the Galileo password for this semester. Database searching can, it be, can be as simple as entering a keyword in the search box. For example, I can type in Wolbachia, hit the search icon, and the database finds over 16,000 items that have that keyword in the description. Well, 16,000 is way too many, and besides, this assignment is to find scholarly or peer-reviewed articles. We need to apply some limits to this search, and I will show you two ways, applying database filters and combining keywords. Most library databases offer filters for peer review or scholarly articles. By selecting this option, the next result list will include only articles that appear in scholarly peer-reviewed publications. Linking concept words with AND and OR is another way to refine a search. It will expand or reduce the number of articles on the results list, as well as make the content of the results more focused. So this time, I'm going to add a type of insect I like. Now I have gone from 16,000 to 19. This seems like too few results, but I learned something from every result list. 
In this one, I can see that my keyword ladybug refers to a ladybird beetle, information that I can use in my next search. I'm going to enlarge the result list by adding keywords using OR and using brackets. This is an example of Boolean logic. Now I'm asking for articles with descriptions that contain the word Wolbachia and the word ladybird or butterflies or both. The next result list offers plenty to choose from, but it's not overwhelming. However, there's one more issue. Distinguishing between review articles, which report on several studies, and research articles, which report on just one study. As a beginning researcher, this can, may be somewhat difficult and require a lot of reading. I do have the option of applying another filter for document type, and selecting review looks promising. A closer look at this item is disappointing, though. These are all book reviews, not scientific reviews. This is one of the problems with using a multidisciplinary database or the Galileo portal. The information may be available, but it's hard to refine the search unless you can describe exactly what you need. In this case, it's a problem that can be remedied by choosing a database designed for scientific research. I'm going to go back to the course guide to get to PubMed. PubMed is the database supported by the federal government through the National Library of Medicine. If you open the database using the link on the course guide, it will be easier to find the full text of the articles that show up on your search result list. I strongly recommend that you use the advanced search screen in PubMed. Now you'll see why. The steps of combining keywords and using database filters can be used in any database, so I will start broad by using two keywords connected with AND. In the second line, I can specify that I want a certain type of publication. I am choosing Publication Type in the field box, and from the index list to the right, I can select Review. Since PubMed is a database of scientific journals, these are review articles in the scientific sense, not book reviews. The search you see here instructs the database to include only review articles on my results list and leave out all other types of publications. The next step is to read through the result list. This list is sorted by date and notice that each record is clearly labeled as a review article. Finding an article that is available in full text can be simplified by using the menu on the left and filtering the result list with the free full text link. However, that limits the number of articles to just a few. Since you have access to subscription databases, it's possible that some of these other articles are also available. Changing the filter to full text available gives you the chance to find out. When you click on the title of an article, it opens the full database record. The record shows the complete abstract, or summary, of the article. On the right-hand side of this screen, you can see some information about how to retrieve the full text of the article. In many cases, the articles are only available by subscription, so the trick is to tell if Lane Library has access. Look for the blue and yellow button in that upper right-hand corner of the record. If it shows up, then you can retrieve the article from one of the library databases. This button only displays if you have opened PubMed from the link on the course guide. In this example, the blue and yellow button opens the Science Direct database at an article in the Journal of Current Opinion in Microbiology. Look for the Adobe PDF symbol to download the full article. You can email it, to, email it to yourself or save it to a thumb drive if it's not convenient to print. 
By the way, it might interest you to know that the library subscription to this one journal in electronic format costs close to $1,000 each year. Once you have located a review article, finding a related research article is the next step, and the review article can help you do that. For example, the article we just looked at in PDF format is also available in HTML version. As you read through, the sources the authors are citing are hyperlinked to the citation numbers. Selecting the hyperlink will display a description of the cited article if the database provides access. The detailed information you learn in the review article can also help you locate a research article elsewhere. In this paragraph, the authors are listing the different ways Wolbachia can be transmitted. Selecting a term from this list can make your next search very easy. Here I am copying the term cytoplasmic incompatibility. In another browser window, I can go back to the course guide and open Galileo again. Pasting in the term I copied and anding it with Wolbachia gets me started on a usable search. Using the quotation marks around the phrase instructs the database to look for the entire phrase cytoplasmic incompatibility, not just the individual words. This is when Galileo is really helpful. With two uniquely scientific terms like cytoplasmic incompatibility and Wolbachia, I have created a search that is detailed enough to find usable results. I can refine the results further by selecting the limiters full text and scholarly peer-reviewed journals and by restricting the date. and even adding another keyword to my search criteria. Most of the articles on the result list will be research articles, although there may be some review, review articles included. You can always tell by reading the abstract. Click on the title of the article to read the abstract and use other database features. From the full record, Galileo provides access to the full text of the article and options to print, email, or save the article. Most students are happy to see how the Cite feature works. Click on Cite and the database formats the information about the article in a citation style. It's not 100% perfect and the student is still responsible for getting the citation exactly right, but it helps a lot. So, in the past 10 minutes or so, I have flown through the process of searching for and retrieving articles required for this class. Let's do a quick review. We distinguished between articles, periodicals, publications, and databases. We searched in Galileo, reviewed the results list, and learned the focusing power of combining keywords with AND, AND OR, and the use of brackets. We used the same strategy in PubMed and limited the results list, setting our publication type as review. I showed you how PubMed connects to the library databases. Then we went back to Galileo with scientific details required for a meaningful search and reviewed some of the features available to improve your search and retrieval. I am so pleased that your instructors had me tape this lesson. I covered so much that I'm guessing it did not all sink in. If that's the case, please review the video. The reference librarians at Lane Library love to get your questions too, so don't hesitate to ask any of us about this project or any other assignment where you think we might be able to help. I'm Judith Garrison, the librarian for the faculty and students in the biology department. Thanks for watching.